Happy New Year. I thought it would be fun to illustrate how margin requirements work for a futures contract using the new Bitcoin futures contract. I am continuing an introduction to derivatives following the John Holt textbook and the FRM syllabus for FRM candidates. And here I'm illustrating how margin requirements work for a futures contract. Normally for futures contracts, I go to the long-standing suspects like corn or copper or wheat, but I thought it'd be fun to look at the very recently introduced Bitcoin futures contract. That's on the uh, CME. And so here I have, let's just assume we are going to take a long position in one Bitcoin futures contract. So it's an input assumption. Keep it simple with one contract. And I have the size of the contract. So as usual, size is a specification of the contract. It's baked into the contract by the exchange. Users don't get to decide that. And CME, when they designed this contract, decided that the Bitcoin futures contract is has a size of five Bitcoins per contract. So price is tricky. It's volatile. Um, but let, I'm going to use uh, pretty close to a round, a round number that's pretty close to uh, the current settlement prices, a little bit less, but very volatile, of 14000 as a futures price. This is for a June 2008 uh, futures contract. So it's about a five-month futures contract. So the futures price is I'm rounding down to 14000 And so that means that if we take a long position in one Bitcoin futures contract with a maturity or delivery of June in five months, then we have 14,000 times five multiplied by five. The notional on that contract is 70,000. Uh, we say notional, not principal, because we, unlike um, naked equity position, we don't invest the whole notional. There's, by definition, leverage in the futures contract. However, when I looked at this contract, not as not nearly as much leverage as we usually see. So the margin requirements also designed by the um, exchange, and presumably, especially in the case of Bitcoin, these will vary over time. We would expect these to reduce as the volatility of Bitcoin presumably might reduce over time. But currently, these margin requirements are about 10 times higher than what I would see in other commodities last time I looked. So the maintenance margin um, is 43%, and the initial margin is 110% of the maintenance margin. So if we take per Bitcoin, and if the uh, futures price is trading, uh, let's say, that again, the June 2008 contract is trading at 14000 43% of that is about $6,000 per Bitcoin. But again, each contract is for five Bitcoin. So multiplied by five, the maintenance margin per contract is $30,100. $30, so it's quite high. You can see here, of course, we're getting close to half the notional. The Initial margin is 110% or 33,110. Okay, so let's just pretend that we are purchasing or taking a long position in this June 2018 contract for maturity in five months. A futures contract, a long futures contract, again, is a promise to purchase this commodity in the future, in this case, June 2018, at this predetermined price. Although in the case of the Bitcoin contract, um, I notice, and this is, does not surprise me at all, there is no physical settlement. It's only cash settlement. So there won't be any uh, delivery of Bitcoin. Rather, what this means is that um, when we get to maturity of the contract, we're taking a long position, so we're gonna gain. We're gonna make a profit equal to anything above that price, and also a loss anything below that price. So this really is a derivative bet um, on the underlying commodity. And so we take the long position. Then what matters is the initial margin. So the initial margin mean, means we need to fund our margin account. In this case, for one contract with thirty three thousand one hundred ten which again is 110% of 43% of the notional. And I would remind you that 
Um, this is not buying stock on a margin. Um, when you buy stock on margin, it's really like a down payment. But for futures margin is really earnest money, or we can think of it as a good faith deposit or risk insurance. Technically, it's a performance bond. So just a tip, futures margin is earnest money. Um, it's not the same as a down payment when you buy stock on margin. Okay, so we've done that. And then what I just have uh, is a simulation here over the next six days where I'm just um, made up some prices. So this could be um, whatever happens to the price will, pr will happen. This is just a simulation. In the case of Bitcoin, um, you might be curious like I am curious about the price limits. And it turns out that the price limits that they've that CME has designed for this contract, presumably these would also change as the volatility on this commodity uh, evolves. But currently there are soft limits at 17 and 13% plus or minus. So that means if the price during a trading session jumps up or down within the soft limits, there is a two minute monitoring period. And then there is a 20% hard limit on the price. So that seems like a pretty large limit to me, but that means that if the, during a trading session, if the price jumps up or down by 20%, they're not going to halt trading, but they, uh, they limit the trading to that 20%. So 7, 13, 20% are the so soft and hard price limits, um, currently on the, on this Bitcoin contract. But so I just have a simulation here and I go to, um, let's say the first day and I just assumed that the, uh, or simulated that the price of Bitcoin drops by 500 to $13,500. And so that means there is a, a daily loss of 2,500 and first day, it being the first day, a cumulative loss of 2,500. And so our margin account balance drops by 2,500. And so the way that margin works is um, it, it's a daily settlement and it's compared to the maintenance margin, right? The initial margin is what we need to fund. And then the maintenance margin is really the ongoing trigger. And so as long as we're above the maintenance margin, there is no trigger. And in this case, in the first day where I dropped 500 um, and our cumulative loss is 500 times five or 2,500, our margin account has dropped, but not below the maintenance margin. And I did add over here, by the way, um, also related another question that I had about this contract is what Bitcoin price could we be using? Because not only is Bitcoin um, volatile, but there um, it, simultaneously, I would presume there are different prices at different spot exchange. And in fact, CME is using, per the contract, what they call a Bitcoin reference rate. And this is a little bit like an index, reminds me a little bit of like LIBOR, where they go out and survey. They are taking an average or weighted or complex average of the um, uh, spot, spot rates that are uh, flowing through mate, what they say are major exchanges. And this is a uh, once a day, once a day average of uh, spot rates therefore on major exchange, Bitcoin exchanges. And they also have a real-time index, which is, is monitored ongoing. And you notice there's, a, there's a, a current difference between the once a day and the ongoing. And I would presume even this difference itself is volatile. Okay, so um, that's just about the uh, pricing mechanism. But then I, um, now, now I step down here to day two, and I just simulated another drop of $500 per Bitcoin. That means our one contract for five Bitcoins has another daily loss of 2,500. And cumulatively, therefore, we would be at a loss of 5,000. So now our margin account balance is dropped 5,000 cumulatively because we've had, we've had two, two uh, daily drops to, to a new balance of 28,110. And this is now below the maintenance margin. And so this is the point of the maintenance margin. Um, our, our, account, our margin account balance has dropped below the maintenance margin. So there is a margin call. And here's a key tip. Here's the key point for those who uh, might be for sitting for FRM or CFA exam. 
The margin call is not to bring us back to the maintenance margin. It's to top us up back to the initial margin. Margin calls go back to the initial margin. So in this case, the margin call is for 5,000 to bring us back to an initial margin of 33,110. Okay, so then I go to day three. I simulated another loss of 500 such that the cumulative loss is 7,500 cumulative loss on the contract. Our margin balance is now 30,610, still above the maintenance margin, no effect. Then for day four, I simulated another a dramatic drop, 2,000 per Bitcoin, cumulatively on the contract, a loss of 17,500, bringing the balance down to 20,610, which would trigger another margin call this, in this case, for 12,500 to top us up again to the initial margin. And then um, for day five, what I did all here finally is I showed a, an increase uh, from 10,500, simulated an increase on day five up to 12,000 per Bitcoin, meaning our cumulative loss is now only 10,000 on the contract. But our margin account balance is now 40,610. And in most cases, um, I didn't check this on the Bitcoin, but in most cases, um, we are allowed to withdraw excess uh, cash from the margin account, the difference between the balance and the initial margin. So in this case, we would be able to withdraw 7,500. Cumulatively, we uh, have uh, funded, in addition to our initial margin, cumulatively, you can see the sum of these three is $10,000. So we're still initial margin plus 10,000 additional net funding into this uh, margin account. And then I get to day six, I did another 500 drop. And then I just, then we just might assume, let's say we close this account out. After all, most futures contracts don't are not held to maturity. They're closed out sometime before then. And if we closed it out here, we would cumulatively have experienced a loss of 2,500 per Bitcoin or 12,500 for the one contract. And, and how would we, how would this manifest for us? Well, um, this 12,500 includes uh, a loss of 2,500. We get our margin account back, but it has with $2,500 less than what it started with. And also we spent or refunded the $10,000 in margin calls. So that together is our $12,500 loss on this one Bitcoin contract under this simulation. Of course, if the price went up, we would be taking a profit. But that's basically how margin requirements work for the Bitcoin contract. Thank you.